Well, we have spent the last several weeks of Lent talking about embracing uncertainty. And that's because there is a lot of uncertainty in our lives, isn't there? In many different aspects of our lives. We've talked about the uncertainty of faith and how we are to understand our faith when life moves back and forth between good and bad, between certain times and uncertain times. And we talked about the uncertainty of forgiveness, about why it is good for us to forgive, even if we don't know for certain that things will change or even if forgiveness that we offer will be received. And last week we talked about the uncertainty of worry and why it does us no good to worry about uncertain things over which we have no control. And I think that perhaps last week must have really spoken to some people because I've had a a lot of comments this week. Well, somebody said I'm not supposed to worry. And, well, pastor, you told me not to worry. Well, today we're going to look at another topic that might strike a nerve with some folks, and that's the uncertainty of surrender. Laura shared for us the scripture from Mark about Jesus' procession into Jerusalem, and as he rode this colt along the road, the the streets were lined with people who were looking for Jesus. They wanted to catch a glimpse of him as he rode by. Well, let me share with you another story about someone who was looking for Jesus. It's found in Luke 19, verses 1 to 10. And the story goes like this. He, being Jesus, entered Jericho and and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. So what makes Zacchaeus' act of looking for Jesus, different from the crowds who lined the streets that first Palm Sunday. Intention. It was Zacchaeus' intention, the reason why he wanted to see Jesus. Now, those who watched Jesus as he rode by, those who threw their cloaks on the road in front of him and waved palm branches and shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Those folks were there to see this man that they'd heard about. They wanted to see this king who, was, who they believed was going to restore the kingdom of Israel back to its former glory, like it was under King David and King Solomon. They were there to see a celebrity. Now, we do the same thing today. Do you doubt me? What about this? You know who that is? Yes, you know who that is. 
that was the introduction of Scott Frost at the Nebraska-Kansas basketball game. I tell you, folks, I am praying hard for this guy because if he doesn't turn things around in a year, y'all are going to kill him. <laughs> Why did Zacchaeus want to see Jesus? No, we aren't sure. Scripture doesn't tell us. Maybe he was searching for meaning and purpose in his life, like so many of us are today. Maybe he was overcome with guilt and shame over past acts, like some of us tend to feel. Maybe it was for the same reason that the others had gathered. He wanted to see this celebrity. But Zacchaeus' life was completely changed by what he saw. So I tend to think that the reason was not just to see a famous person walking by. Zacchaeus went out of his way to ensure that he saw Jesus walk by. Now we know from Luke's text that he was challenged height-wise. We also know that he was a tax collector. Tax collectors were despised in Jesus' time. It wasn't like your accountant that you make the appointment and they hand you your 1040 and say, here's the bad news. They showed up at your door and said, here's how much you owe. I want it right now. And usually the amount that they collected was higher than what the person actually owed. And the tax collectors would skim off the top. That's how they became rich. So the chance that someone would allow a short tax collector to move to the front of the line to see Jesus walk by were slim to none. And so Zacchaeus found a way to make sure that he could see Jesus, and up the tree he went. Now immediately prior to this story about Zacchaeus in the Gospel of Luke is the story about a blind beggar. He's sitting on the roadside begging and he hears a commotion and he ask, asks what's going on and they tell him Jesus is passing by and so he cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Well, the people around him are annoyed. He's bugging them. They are there to see Jesus. And so they tell him to be quiet. But he just cries out even louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Well, Jesus hears him and has the blind man brought to him and asks him, what do you want me to do for you? And the man says, Lord, let me see again. And Jesus restored his sight. For both the blind man and Zacchaeus, there was a physical impediment to seeing Jesus. One was blind, the other was short. The blind man overcame his barrier by yelling. Zacchaeus overcame his by climbing a tree. But there's another aspect of blindness that talks more than just a physical ability. When blindness is talked about and referred to in the Bible, it's often a way for describing a person's spiritual condition. Biblically speaking, sight is not just about having the use of a physical ability. The verb to see in Greek also has dimensions of perceiving and knowing and understanding. The blind man needed help in order to see Jesus physically. Zacchaeus needed help in order to, to see Jesus in this other sense, in order to know Jesus. Zacchaeus wanted to know Jesus, and so he climbed to the top of the tree to start the process. And as soon as he made it to the top, he immediately realized something. Jesus was already looking at him. There's another similarity between the blind beggar 
and Zacchaeus. Both of them took great effort to seek Jesus out. And when both of them found Jesus, Jesus was already returning the favor. What do you want me to do for you? Is what he asked the blind man. And to Zacchaeus, he said, hurry and come down, for I have to stay at your house. In other words, Jesus was telling Zacchaeus, you know, you've been looking for me, but I've already had my eye on you, and I'm here to help. Jesus had been seeking Zacchaeus out as much as Zacchaeus had been looking for Jesus. This idea is something that we as Methodists should be familiar with. The idea of prevenient grace. Think back to confirmation class. This idea that God's grace is at work in our lives before we're even able to recognize it for what it is. Before we're even able to understand that it is God. His grace is already working in our lives. And that grace is always on the move. It's always searching for us and drawing near to us. And it's always calling us to seek out the source of that grace. We discover that as we've been longing for God, God has actually been searching us out the whole time. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, but the power of the story is that he was seen by Jesus. He wanted to know Jesus, but found that he was already known by Jesus. And when Christ looked at him with compassion and kindness, Zacchaeus knew that the time for repentance and transformation had arrived. There could be no more delay. He surrendered his life to Christ. And Zacchaeus became a changed man. He discovered that it was possible by the power of God revealed by Jesus to reverse the course of his life, to undo his cheating ways, to make restitution for his wrongs, and to become a benefactor rather than a swindler. This idea of surrender is what makes Zacchaeus so different from the crowd waving their palms. They wanted to see Jesus, but they weren't willing to surrender to him. They were caught up in the celebrity of Jesus, the excitement that he brought, this idea that they had seen the king that was going to restore their kingdom. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus and have his life transformed. This happened with his surrender to Christ. So who are you? Are you a member of the crowd lining the street shouting Hosanna? One that is caught up in the celebrity of Jesus and the excitement that he brings? Or are you Zacchaeus? One who is willing to surrender to God's will for your life and have that life transformed. There's something interesting about celebrity. It's fickle. As quickly as someone rises to the top, they can be knocked down even faster. The crowds that are shouting the praises of a person one day can cry foul the next. Those same people who lined the street on Sunday shouting Hosanna would be shouting something different on Friday. Crucify him. Crucify him. Jesus didn't come to be a celebrity. He came to be our Savior, to transform our lives and to transform the world. He does this through our surrender. Now, surrender brings with it uncertainty. We don't know what will be required of us once we submit to God's will for our lives. 
but we can be certain that Jesus has already seen us, that he has been searching us out and is waiting to transform our lives into something better. Will you embrace this uncertainty of surrender today? Amen.